with your YouTube friends. How are you doing today? Welcome, welcome. So if you're new here, hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Mia and I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. The subscribe button is right down there and next to it you will find a bell. If you ding that bell and choose all, you will be notified whenever I put up a new video. And if you're back, hi friends, welcome back. I'm very grateful that you're here. So today we're gonna we're gonna do a little I don't know a women chat mini women chat I'm not sure how long this video will be because I really just want to tell you about our Easter I did a respond to your comments video the other day and <clears throat> sorry for some reason people took that as a women chat so uh, yeah this one will just be. Otherwise, I have to remember 14 days, and that's not possible, you guys. <laughs> so, I just want to tell you about our Easter. But, if you're new to diamond painting and you do not know what a Whipping Chat is, what WIP stands for Work in Progress. What can be diamond painting, knitting, crochet, cross-stitch, um, everything you can do shopping you can drive in your car you can treat it as, as a podcast or, or an audiobook whatever you want to do and um, I'm gonna do my diamond painting so my diamond painting is this one threats of the universe by Scott Howden and Diamond Art Club isn't he beautiful I'm a knitter if you don't know so of course I had to have this one I am right about here. I have this painting upside down. I usually have that for the first two rows. And as you can see, I'm almost done with row number two. And then I'm going to turn her 180. So yeah, I'm, I'm more or less done with her hair. She isn't that big. She's 55.8 by 76 centimeters. That's a good medium, I think. But yeah. It is a square dwell diamond painting because that's all I'm doing. So yeah, <clears throat> other than that, I have my Munimate tray. I have my Elizabeth Ward knockoff system here, the containers. That's what I store my diamond, my drills in. And then I have this beautiful, beautiful trinket tray. This is made by Angie. She has an Etsy shop called... Ah, uh, diamond addicted, diamond addiction art. I don't know, Angie. I never seem to be able to remember your shop. I need a, a, a card or something. But it's beautiful. Look at it, the colors, and this little thing that is a trash minder. And as you can see, it has a little magnet here. the The trash minder has the same. So, well, not today. <laughs> What's going on? Why won't you stick? Where is that magnet? There you go. So yeah, it wasn't... You can see I can tilt it and it won't go anywhere. I don't know what happened just before. But yeah, I love that. So please go check her out. She is hosting a an event right now. The Josephine Wall Diamond Paint Along 2024. So if you do have a Josephine Wall um, diamond painting, please go check it out. I will link the Facebook group down below. So what else? What else? Right now I'm using this beautiful pen. It's from North Alchemist, a Danish pen turner. And since I live in Denmark, of course I have to support him. I have a glue dot in my single placer and up here in my multi placer both placers are from diamond no this one is just a regular brass tip but the placer is from diamond art club and in it i have my own um scented patty this one is gingerbread and what else i have my tweezers and then i have some other pens over here just in case i'm gonna need them I used, hang on, I used this pen from a neighbor's outpost for my ABs. <clears throat> so you're probably going to see that one. 
yeah i'm trying to move things a little around around here while i'm diamond painting for the longest time i've had my containers up here but I was kind of tired of, you know, reaching over, and since I'm right-handed, I felt like I was, you know, all over the screen. So, I've tried moving it. So, right now, all my drill containers is over here. When I'm at the other side of the canvas, they're over here. So, let's see how that works out. But, how are you guys doing? Please let me know. So, yeah. Um, I would love to know how you're doing. What are you working on while listening to my jabbering? See, that's what I forgot. The chat part about women chat, that just means I'm going to chat your ears off for a while. <laughs> See, I forgot that one. Oh, well. And also, before we're getting into this too far, please give my video a thumbs up. It really does help with all the YouTube algorithm algorithms. That's a hard word today. So yeah, please do give this video a thumbs up. And you are also more than welcome to share it with your friends that are also crafty. I am working on some knitting videos. I just need to, to work on it a little bit, you know, figure out how and what and stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah, it isn't. Apparently, the knitting video isn't as easy for me as the diamond painting ones because I need to figure out how I want the setup to be. Because I want you guys to be able to see me knitting. I mean, if I'm sitting like this, you can't see what I'm doing. I mean, you will just watch my hands move around, which, what's the point? Because I do want to try to make some instructional videos. Not that I am a, a professional knitter or anything. It's just, you know, we learn differently. So I'm, I'm working on those in my head. <clears throat> but yeah. Let me know how you're doing, what you're working on. How was your Easter? I would love to know how was your Easter if you're celebrating. I know not everybody is, and I know, but well, now I know that our holidays around the world isn't the same. I kind of thought that the days that were bank holidays or whatever you want to call them were the same all over. I mean, for instance, in Denmark, it's a holiday Friday, Sunday, and Monday. But I found out that some places it's only Sunday, which to me, well, to me it is, it's weird, you know, since that's not what we have here. And I'm like, well, Easter is more than one day. I mean, kids here has off from school that entire Easter week and won't go back uh, aren't going back to school that weren't going back to school until Tuesday this week so yeah different different but yeah let me know let me know what did you do in the Easter weekend whether you celebrate or not I'm sorry I'm counting over here hang on a second I'm a perfectionist you you know that by now <laughs> so I'm kind of like, even though I'm I'm doing this checkerboarding, it needs to line up somehow. I don't know. I'm a weird. I'm a weird. I know it. For some reason, some of these drills on the canvas, um, if I'm, I have I have a long sleeve on. Yesterday I had a knitted jumper on, and. All of a sudden, my, my jumper had a, a uh, drill stuck to it, and it came off of the canvas, and I was like, how did that happen? I still don't know. And see, and I have another one missing here. I don't know. Why are they popping off? This is another drill. I don't know. Maybe I... I 
If that keeps happening, I think I need to contact I'm an art club because then there's something wrong with the glue, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I haven't really had puppy drills with Diamond Art Club. I had my very first Diamond Art Club, which is, of course, uh, I had issues with the glue and that the I had a lot of trashy drills, but I haven't had drills kind of, well, they're not, well, they're kind of popping, are they? I don't know what to call it. Um, anyway, so Easter. <clears throat> so David had, for the first time ever, I think he says, have had the entire Easter off. Usually he's working on Easter Monday, which is a holiday over here. Um, and other times he's been working Easter, Easter day, Saturday. Um, but he had written that he could work on, on Easter Monday, but he got the day off because he got to work on other holidays. Um, so we had the entire weekend. We did have some plans, but let's, let's do Friday first. Friday, he was out biking when he got up because the weather was supposed to be yucky a little later and I was doing some laundry. Then when he came home and had showered and stuff, we took to the couch because the weather had begun to rain. Basically, it started raining just a few minutes before he, he reached home. So yeah. So he showered and we took to the couch. I had my knitting. And then we basically watched Blue Bloods most of the day. <laughs> yeah, more or less. So yeah, that, that was, you know, us just chilling and being together, you know. So yeah, that's that was Friday. Then Saturday, we had Easter lunch with my brother and Rosa, her mom and her grandma and her dad and her dad's wife. So we were eight. Yeah, we were eight. Rosa had been sick that entire week and felt better, but, you know, still wasn't well. So she was a little grumpy due to fever and stuff like that. But she, she was, you know, looking forward to her company. I mean, she was written as the hostess, of course, I mean, yeah. We all brought something, um, <clears throat> and Rosa was there. I mean, she she did eat a little bit with us, and then she went to the couch because she wasn't feeling well. So she was laying over there, watching some iPad, sleeping a little, and then whenever she felt like it, she would come and and hang out a little. But she was a little, she was a little grumpy and a little tired and feverish. She had the, you know, these reddish fever cheeks. I mean, you can see on a child when they have fever, right? You can just see it. But we were there for, oh, I don't know, four hours or so. Then everybody left. And David and I needed to go buy some birthday cards and get some money from the bank because we were going to a birthday on Sunday, Easter Sunday, in David's family. <clears throat> his cousin and his cousin's son, they celebrated together. Um, yeah. But that was, that was a great day too. We saw... Well, almost the entire family were there on David's side. His his brother, he who must not be named, wasn't there. Apparently, he hadn't even let 
them know if they if he would be there or not, which is very rude if you ask me. I mean, at least you can let them know, right? But yeah, so I'm trying to find the next symbol over here. But it, it was great seeing everybody again, and we had a, we usually call it a youth table. We, <laughs> so we had the, some of the younger people, David's cousin's daughter and her boyfriend, and then David's cousin's stepdaughter and her boyfriend. Then there was David, I, his sister, and a cousin sitting at one table. So we call it the youth table because none of us are really as old as we pretend to be, as our birth certificate says. So it was it was nice being there with the younglings. And we talked and talked about everything and nothing and yeah. Listen to the to the younger ones talk about their education and all the the papers they're doing and what the papers were about and stuff like that. It was, I loved listening to them. I mean, yeah. They're just enthusiastic and can't wait to be done with their educations. And at the same time, they know how privileged they are. You know, did I totally forget some of them over here? I did. Um... So yeah, and the the daughter of David's cousin, uh, I hadn't seen her in years because she's been living a, quite a far away and hadn't had the opportunity to, you know, to come to the Christmas lunches that we have every year. Also because you know she's seeing her mom for Christmas and sometimes she's celebrating with her dad that is with David's cousin so she hasn't always you know had been available for Christmas dinner and the uh, second Christmas day so she was there and I I have always called her my little oh, this one is hard to explain so in Denmark when you know you have a teenager especially a teenage girl and they have this little sour expression you know that when the when they look a little unhappy or whatever you want to call it well <clears throat> over here we kind of say that they look like a lemon you know that they have a lemon face or whatever so when she was in her early teens she had that little sour expression on, you know, that little bored, whatever expression. So I started calling her, and this is a direct translation, my lemon child. And, you know, she, she had a hard time keeping that bored, little sour expression whenever I called her my lemon child. And she began, began calling me her lemon mother. So, yeah, and then uh, Sunday when, when she came in with her boyfriend, she just looked up and, ah, lemon mother, and we just hugged and hugged and hugged forever. I'm like, oh, I've missed her so much. Yeah, and we got to meet her boyfriend. We hadn't met him before. So that, that was really, really great. Gonna invite them to our 145th birthday in June. That is David and I and David's sister celebrating our birthdays together. David and I will both be 45 and his sister will be 55. So 145. So yeah, we're gonna celebrate here. And we're, <laughs> we have a kind of dilemma because you know, we have another of their cousins. He's um, he's with a an amazing woman, and they have two girls. But the girls, I mean, they're both older. They're not old, old, but you know, in 
around in the 50s I think they are um, and these girls are under 10 um, so they're not really maybe they're just in the 40s no I think he's in his 50s um, and these girls really need a a little more strict a little firmer hand I might say um, because really not a lot of people can stand being around them and that's not the girl's fault at all they are not to blame they they are just you know what their parents allow them to be but it kind of makes it a little you know sometimes people don't want to invite them because they can't take all the screaming and fighting and running around and they were here uh, Christmas 2022 wasn't it 2022 yeah for Christmas dinner we hosted that one and they were screaming and yelling and fighting and they were chasing our cats around and I yeah so so we have been a little ve uh, very about you know should we invite them I mean, at first we were like, they never invite us to anything. We are not invited for birthdays or whatever, the girls' birthdays. So we were like, you know, do we do we owe them to invite them? But then we were like, we basically invite everybody else in the family. We are. Everybody else is invited. So can we really not invite them? And then we've talked about, you know, well, maybe we should invite them and then say, please find a sitter for the kids. We can't say that it is because the party is kids free because we we are inviting my brother and Rosa. But I'm not worried about Rosa. Rosa is a calm child. She does what she's told. And yeah i'm not worried about her because if i tell her or if my brother tells her to calm down and come sit by the table a little you know she will do it she might mope a little and like i'm playing but she will do it she won't just look at her her dad and go i don't want to you know which is basically what these girls are doing so it's a bit of a dilemma and the mom has been you know um kind of how do you say that you know it's been for the, that the, blah, 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 blah. the last christmas dinner we we have this game with little packages where you're tossing some dices and then if you have a six you can choose a package on the table every every person brings or every family brings um, at least two packages and um, then when all the packages from the table has been taken you take a an, an egg clock an egg what do you call it or maybe just a stop stop clock stop watch and you put it on a certain time you know nobody knows how long it can be two minutes it can be 10 minutes it can be 20 minutes or anything in between and then you start rolling the dice again and then when you hit a six you get to steal a package from somebody else so the the girls have kind of you know made it this big deal because they want to be there but they don't want to give up the packages so it's a screaming party whenever you know they're in it so last year um <clears throat> the ones that hosted it decided you know we're gonna get some 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 legos for the girls and then they can go 
in another room to play with that Lego. And the mom kind of felt like the girls weren't welcome, which was totally not what it was about. It was more about, you know, keeping the girls entertained so that they weren't, you know, so they got their own presents, not these adult presents that they can't really use for anything, you know. But yeah, that's, she was kind of like, I'm not going to be there anymore and my girls are blah, 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 you know. It was, it was drama. So we're kind of like, so how much drama is she going to throw if we're telling them that the girls can't come? <laughs> because, you know, at, at the same time, they, they are older now and I know for a fact that they have gotten help from the city they live in you know family help so that there might be a little more order at home if you can say that you know they're getting help to <clears throat> how to to um not raise them, but you know how to set border um, limitations and stuff like that. And um, yeah, be there really, because that's that has been the issue as well. When they've been to a family gathering, the parents basically sat down and un unless other people started, you know, screaming at their kids. No, I never screamed at them, but you know, got firm with them then they would get up and be like oh what did they do and then they would end up screaming and yelling the parents and threaten the girls that they would end up in the car until they were going home and nothing happened you know they gave all these threats and didn't didn't follow through and you know kids they know that you know the first time you don't follow through they know that they can basically do whatever they want because you know nothing happens and that's been the issue you know their mom always say well then you're gonna end up in the car but nothing happens and she tends to grab them rather hard which isn't really you know well seen over here you can actually go to jail if you hit your kids over here. So, yeah. But we're trying to figure out how we can... How, how to deal with it, you know? How to... Should we tell them to find a sitter for the kids and then deal with the drama? Should we give them a chance? But at the same time, I have to think about the cats. I mean, they live here. And I don't want to chase, I don't want them chased around like that Christmas because, yeah, no, they, the cats live here, they don't. And then I'm like, so do, do I need to set some very firm boundaries? Being like, so the first time you're not doing as told, as you're told, you need to come to the table and sit there and you can't move. You know, which is also a little unfair for children that one of them is nine and the other is, well, one of them will be nine and one of them will be six this summer. So, I mean, you can't expect kids in that age to sit still an entire day. I don't know. I find it a little, you know, what to do, what to do. And we were supposed to have been talking about it this week. I mean, the week isn't over yet, but still, I mean, it's Thursday. We'll see, we'll see. We also need to get that invitation sent out because it's in the summer we're celebrating our birthday in June so we need to to get it out before everybody 
plans their vacation. But yeah. We'll see, we'll see. Do you have any, well not advice, but do you have any thoughts about it? What would you do if you had a situation like this? I mean, I'm not worried about Rosa at all, but these two gals, and I'm kind of like, you know, they were, they supposed to know better. They're older than Rosa. Rosa will be four the week after our party, and then she's more well-behaved. I mean, then again, she has a present parent she we can't say that about her mom but my my brother is present and he sets the boundaries and stuff like that so she kind of knows what goes and what doesn't and she knows the rules out here she knows that the cats can be played with if they want to and that if they're going away if they walk away from her that means that she has to leave them alone. She has to let them let, let them leave. I mean, and she knows that because she's been out here since she was one. The thing is, these girls also have cats at home. But their dad doesn't really see cats as a pet. So he's not always treating cats very well. They're, they're hunters. They... You only have cats to hunt mice and rats, you know, stuff like that. They're not really a pet pet. So he is sometimes, you know, kicked out after their cats and stuff like that. And the girls have seen that and now they kind of think, you know, we can treat a cat however we want. Which is a big no-no here. But yeah. What would you do in this situation? Would you tell them to... Get the girls a sitter or would you give them a chance and hope that the year and a half since they were here last has been a little, you know, they've matured a little bit? I don't know. And then we can hope that the weather is good because then we can chase them out in the, in the garden to be out there. Sadly, we don't have a playground around here, but yeah. Just let me know, what would you do? Do you have any thoughts to the subject? And yeah, wasn't that really? <laughs> oh yeah, I think that's going to be it for today because, I mean, I don't think this will be an entire women chat. But yeah. Oh, well, Monday we didn't do anything. Monday we were, David was biking and um, I was diamond painting, really. So that is basically our Easter. And <clears throat> because this was just supposed to be a little shorter, we've been chat an extra video, an extra chat, since I didn't tell you anything in my responding to your comments video. I think I'll stop here and uh, again, please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help. And uh, if you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And uh, I'm glad you were here. And uh, until my next video. Bye, everybody. Bye. Love you.